Good morning subscribers, Geekonomics here, bringing you, hopefully, barring any interruptions, hopefully, the remaining uh, consideration of Extract 4 for F585 June 2017. So if you've watched video 1 on paragraphs 1 and 2, you will recall that we were looking at this area of the specification, development and sustainability. And, as I've just mentioned, we had got to the second paragraph. So, we've done this one and this one. So, I'm going to pick this up uh, on this little section and just go through, hopefully, to the end and then present you with what I think the likely question will be at the end um, and, obviously, in your exam in June. So, let's get to it, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> Excuse me. So... Let me clear these annotations from previously. Okay, okay. Cool, cool. So you'll remember from our video yesterday, we were thinking about the free trade zone. And the remaining paragraphs really go into that in a little bit more detail. Talk a little bit about what benefits the free trade zone will bring and a little bit about international trade, which is mentioned also in uh, the first two paragraphs. So, what is the zone intended for? To create a climate for, ladies and gentlemen, foreign capital. So we talked about this yesterday, the foreign direct investment, sucking in foreign capital. It's going to have better conditions than the rest of the economy, said Cuba's trade and investment minister. So this is somebody who's looking after trade and investment. Uh, the project mirrors similar developments that have sprung up in fast-growing communist nations such as China and Vietnam. So let's just think a little bit about China, for example, ladies and gentlemen. China, as you know, has brought so many people out of absolute poverty in the last couple of decades and the reason for that is, of course, because it has grown very rapidly. Now, consider how has it grown? It has grown because it has been able to attract foreign capital into the country. It is labour abundant, and therefore it can specialise in relatively labour intensive um, production. And indeed, that is where its comparative advantage lies. But it, the reason that it has been able to grow so rapidly is because, of course, it has embarked upon export-led growth. And it would appear from this that perhaps the same idea is occurring to the Trade and Investment Minister in Cuba. Bring in the foreign capital, establish the production base, bring in the foreign technical know-how, let that just spill out into the local economy, let the skills of the local economy, the local workers improve, and then embark upon an export-led growth strategy. So that's something to maybe consider. Experts doubt whether Cuba will follow the same path as the Asian Tigers. Now, those of you who don't know anything about the Asian Tigers, we're talking about really the, er, the 1990s for the Asian Tiger economies when <clears throat> these economies did grow very rapidly. They did come to a little bit of a sticky end, however, in sort of 1997, 1998, um, when things went a little bit pear-shaped in those economies. But that things, as, as with all things, they go in cycles, and it has picked up subsequently. Um, but, you know, a tiger economy is a rapidly growing uh, economy. We used to talk about the Celtic tiger, the Irish Celtic tiger, but that came to a sticky end as well in uh, the 2007 financial crisis. Anyway, we digress. The ruling Communist Party maintains that state control will take precedence. So state control still taking precedence. So this is still very much, ladies and gentlemen, an economy in transition, not fully opening up, not fully embracing the free market forces. The ambitious development is the latest of control, controlled reforms, so it's a slow transitional process, made since Raul Castro came to power in 2008, obviously uh, subsequent to the passing of Fidel Castro. The government has already relaxed its control over many sectors, encouraging ordinary Cubans to fill the void with their own 
private enterprises. Now the whole notion, ladies and gentlemen, of a private enterprise, the fact that you and I could set up our own business in a planned economy, that was an anathema to a planned economy. And so this, this is real progress in that respect, the fact that they are considering, okay, if you want to start your own business, fine. If you want to employ people, fine. If you want to earn some profit and actually keep it for yourself, fine. So this notion of private enterprise is very important. The special development zone <coughs> it is to encourage sustainable economic development. So remember sustainable economic development and remember here ladies and gentlemen here's this word economic development which is of course mentioned in the specification. Sustainable development means that we are growing and developing the economy but not at the expense of future generations. So we are not just uh, hoovering up all of the country's natural resources and uh, benefiting the people of today and then leaving nothing for future generations. This is going to be a sustainable growth path, one which can be continued for generations to come. By attracting, here's this word again, look, foreign investment, foreign capital, trade and investment. How many times are these phrases mentioned over and over? Technological innovation and know-how, as we've talked about. Industrial concentration. Think about economies of scale and, and the benefits that arise when you get industrial concentration in a, in a given area. So you really want to think about the external economies of scale that arise from that. Factories develop in an area, then you get a whole host of surrounding little firms maybe, which produce nuts and bolts for the bigger firms. They provide employment of course. Then around that you get universities, schools, colleges providing courses specifically tailored to the niche areas of the industries that we're talking about. So all sorts of benefits from this industrial concentration. But again, ensuring environmental protection. So linking that in with this notion of sustainable development. Next paragraph. Uh, the zone promotes and protects enterprises, etc., etc. Here we have this again, ladies and gentlemen, clean technologies, environmental protection, sustainable development, added value goods, quality employment. Mr. Spence, please come to reception. <coughs> Thank you. So you'll know that in the state system, and there's a great book by Heinrich Böll, I remember from my German A-level, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> talks about a deep, there's a little uh, story in it called Die Postkarte. And in that it talks about the fact that people working in the Federal Republic of Germany in the late 1940s, early 1950s, they were obviously in a state's planned economy, but they were given jobs simply for the sake of having a job. There was no reason for that job, it was just to give them uh, something to do throughout the day. Well, this is totally different, this is the whole notion of quality employment, which intellectually stimulates people, it develops people. That of course makes them work harder, if they're more interested in their job, that is good for the economy. Developing human capital, so this notion of education and training within an environment of safety and good professional practices. And then lastly, this F, the free trade zone, will be a touchstone for technological development, a magnet for foreign capital. Foreign capital, how many times have we seen that? Foreign capital, foreign investment, foreign capital, trade and investment. And will become a place that will provide for the growth of cutting edge manufacturing and services permanently connected. So this is not just a sort of quick fix this is the aim is that this will be lasting this will be durable okay so ladies and gentlemen on that basis the things that we are looking at here are what well we're talking about number one the benefits of opening up this economy this transition phase from a planned economy to the market economy so you need to be aware of the characteristics of a market economy the characteristics of a, a planned economy and be able to compare and contrast. 
If I have time at some point, I'll come back with a, a video on that. We're talking obviously a lot about foreign capital, foreign investment, human capital. So foreign capital, this whole notion of bringing in capital from abroad, what will that do in terms of AD and AS? Well, let's think about it. You're bringing in this capital, ladies and gents. Let me take this off. Desktop annotations. You're bringing in the foreign capital. So from a purely macro point of view and an aggregate supply productive potential point of view, what's going to happen? Well, clearly, if you bring in foreign capital, which is tip-top technology, and you then train your local workers, so you invest in your local human capital, then on both counts, that is going to enable your productive capacity to shift. So your LRAS is going to be shifting to the right, like so. Indeed, ladies and gentlemen, it is more than likely that the capital that you bring in will be much more efficient than the capital currently being used in the Cuban economy, and as a consequence of that, the LRAS might not only be shifting right, but it also might be shifting downwards because of the cost uh, benefits to the economy, the ability to reduce costs with this more productive and more efficient technology. So you're going to be uh, establishing a production base, which, which wasn't there in the first instance. And again, that increases your productive potential. Okay, so that's on the supply side point of view. What about on the demand side? Well, it says in the extract that people are going to be allowed to own and run their own businesses, private enterprises. Money will be going into their pockets. They will want to spend that money. So that will then create demand in the economy. So AD will be shifting to the right. Now, AD shifting to the right, a few things you want to think about here that you would like to mention would obviously be reference to the multiplier, change in expenditure, whatever its source causes a change in national income, greater than the initial change in expenditure. So in other words, if you inject uh, $10 into the economy, it will grow by maybe 20 If that was the case, the multiplier is 2 and so on. So you want to think about that. You want to think about maybe the rate of growth, the rate of pickup in the Cuban economy. If it's going to be growing like a tiger economy, as referenced in the extract, talks about a tiger economy, then maybe the pickup in the rate of growth will be significant. That would lead to an accelerated rate of investment, and hence we'd be having stimulus of C, we'd be having stimulus of I investment, the government would be, getting, would be starting to collect more export revenue and as a consequence of that, some of that may be in the form of some type of taxation. So G might rise. It's going to be export-led growth probably, so therefore your net exports, your trade position is going to improve. So all of these things can be shifting AD and AS and the, the crucial thing is that in terms of, if you want to talk about a sustainability point of view from the point of view of sustainable as in not generating inflation, because you're shifting AD and AS, that is much more sustainable because you, end, you will end up, if we take this example, you might end up here at this final equilibrium where you're actually moving from a start point here to here. So you've got growth, but you've also got lower uh, levels in terms of inflation. So th this, is, this is all good news in that respect, ladies and gentlemen. Other things you want to consider are, of course, it mentions quite a lot the whole notion of trade and international trade. So you want to be thinking there about the law of absolute and comparative advantage. Be able to explain the law of comparative advantage. Countries specialising and then engaging in trade and that then enables them to enhance the country's standard of living in that respect. So you need to be thinking about all of these things. You need to be thinking, as we've said before, about the fact that they are attracting multinational corporations. Now, of course, multinational corporations bring benefits, but they also bring disadvantages. Joseph Stiglitz's book is a great reference point for that, and I've talked to you about that before, so I'm not going to go into that. So 
it's not all rosy, obviously. Um, and you want to be thinking, well, how can I comment upon this? So if this is located in Marielle, you might want to think about the migration effects and the fact that people would migrate possibly and potentially to this particular area and so you get pockets of deprivation in other areas of the country and so on. So these are all aspects, ladies and gentlemen, that you want Aaron to think Wade, about. Please come to reception. Thank you. But I think in terms of the overall question for this particular extract, the overall question, I think, well, you need to be looking at the following, ladies and gentlemen. I think it might be, whoops, that's the wrong sheet. So, ladies and gentlemen, in terms of a question for this particular uh, extract, I think you need to be obviously looking here and what types of uh, questions might we be looking for? Well, we're obviously looking for a comment question, which is really evaluate. So, the key things that we'd be looking here would be maybe evaluate the effectiveness of policies to promote development because, of course, it, it, that relates specifically to this. Evaluate the role of international trade and integration in promoting development. So we do have this notion of integration in terms of greater integration with the global economy, this whole notion of globalisation. So I think in terms of the question for this particular extract, those are the two key bullet points that you need to focus upon. And of course that would be, the question in the exam would simply be comment on the effectiveness and comment on the role of. And both of those would carry 10 marks. So I think that's it ladies and gentlemen and I'll come back to you shortly hopefully with extract 5 and then maybe try to flesh out a few more of the arguments for these uh, in later videos. But that's it for now, bye for now.